Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is TBR Schmidt and this is my wife Samantha. Hello. And today we are watching Fight Club. What do you know about this? I know this is Brad Pitt and then I know that the first rule of Fight Club is that you don't talk about Fight Club. Okay. But that's literally all I know about this movie. I'm not sure if it's like an actual fighting movie where maybe it's like an underground like fighting thing or if that's like a euphemism for something else. Yeah, that's essentially it. I know obviously this is like a classic film. I just, I've never seen it. Yeah, so I have seen this movie. It's been a very long time, so I remember very little, but I remember enough. This is just your first time watching this. And I don't wanna say a single thing. I just wanna get into the movie and you know, we'll talk about it after. Maybe, <laughs> um, and uh, and we'll go from there. Sounds good. But I, I'm really excited to watch this again, and I'm really excited to see it through your eyes. I think it's obviously well past the time of my life that I probably should have seen this, so I'm excited. So this one, our Patreon drama poll. So we want to thank all our patrons for voting on this to win. If you would like to see the full length reaction to this, as well as everything else that we have reacted to, the link to our Patreon is in the description. If you want to interact with us on Twitch, Instagram, or Twitter, all of those links are in the description as well. And with that, let's get into the movie. An aggressive start. Yeah. Okay, she's the, like, Tim Burton yeah. lady? Okay. Meet Meet them. Jared Leto, all right. People are always asking me if I know Tyler Durden. With a gun barrel between your teeth, you speak only in vowels. I can't think of anything. We have front row seats for this theater of mass destruction. In two minutes, primary charges will blow base charges. I know this because Tyler knows this. Holy crap. <laughs> Pretty intense. Bob had bitch tits. <laughs> this was a support group. Bob's testicles were removed. He developed bitch tits because his body upped the estrogen. Oh, jeez. And that was where I fit. Let me start earlier. For six months, I couldn't sleep. With insomnia, nothing's real. Everything's a copy of a copy. Of a copy. I feel like I can't even keep up with this guy's mind right, right now. <laughs> I had become a slave to the IKEA nesting instinct. Oh. I love that this is like a catalog. <laughs> I wake up in strange places. I have no idea how I got there. You need to lighten up. Yeah, he is not in a good place. <laughs> no. See the guys with testicular cancer. That's pain. I guess he doesn't have testicular cancer. Yeah, I guess not. I thought he did. She had her first child last week with her, uh, with her new husband. Oh. It's time for the one-on-ones. We really open ourselves up to find a partner. And this is how I met the big Moosey. Bob. Bob had been a champion bodybuilder. My two grown kids won't even return my phone calls. Mm -mm. Poor, Poor Bob. Bob. You can cry. <laughs> <laughs> I let go. It's really good. It worked. I found freedom. Oh, I like Bob. I became addicted. Oh no. <laughs> addicted to these meetings. If I didn't say anything, people always assume the worst. <laughs> uh, At least he's getting the crying out. True. And I guess he's not lying technically to anybody. This was my vacation and she ruined everything i had seen her at free and clear my blood parasites group thursdays <laughs> just hates her her lie reflected my lie so once again i couldn't sleep oh no oh, it all got ruined next group after guided meditation is that supposed to be happening that like flash of a person i no longer have any fear of death i'm so close to the end and all i want is to get laid for the last time Everyone, let's thank Chloe. Thank Chloe. Never really thought about that. If I did have a tumor, I'd name it Marla. It's just always in the background. I wonder why she's there. Just showing up to all these meetings, too. Yeah. I saw you testicular cancer. I saw you practicing this. Rupert. I'll expose you. <laughs> Go ahead. I'll expose you. Oh, she's she's the... enjoying this. Yeah. I can't cry. There's another faker present, and I need this. It's not my problem. Ugh. She's an enemy now. <laughs> Testicular cancer should be no contest. I have more of a right to be there than you. You still have your balls. <laughs> I'll take the blood parasite. I'm gonna 
Take the organic brain dimension, I'm okay? Like Take both the parasites. They're yours. <laughs> Just steal people's clothes? <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Just selling it? Yes. I'm selling some clothes. I want bowel cancer. That's your favorite too. Take the first and third Sunday of the month. Deal. Well, let's not make a big thing out of it, okay? Maybe we should exchange numbers. Okay. <laughs> Just, does not care about traffic. You wake up at SeaTac. You wake up at O'Hare, Pacific Mountain. Insurance, maybe? Yeah, I was like, what does he do? I was a recall coordinator. My job was to apply the formula. The teenager's braces are wrapped around the backseat ashtray. Oof. Might make a good anti-smoking ad. If X is less than the cost of a recall, we don't do one. Which car company do you work for? That'd be my question. <laughs> a major one. I'm not buying one of your cars. <laughs> I prayed for a crash. Jeez. Life insurance pays off triple if you die on a business trip. Is that true? I feel like I'm gaining so much knowledge. <laughs> What do you do? I make and I sell soap. And this is how I met Tyler Durden. Oh, that was Tyler. <laughs> One can make all kinds of explosives using simple household items. But he sells soap. Ah, now a question of etiquette. As I pass, do I give you the ass or the crutch? <laughs> My suitcase was vibrating. Nine times out of ten, it's an electric razor. It's a dildo. <laughs> I thought I was going to say like a ball. <laughs> Stole someone's car. <laughs> the walls were solid concrete. Blows out of your floor to ceiling windows and sails flaming into the night. Oh. Was that his apartment? I think so. It's all his oh, yeah. special stuff. The police would later tell me that the pilot light might have gone out. If he wasn't on that business trip, he would have died. I'm gonna call Tyler the soap man. If you ask me now, I couldn't tell you why I called him. I forgot he got the business card from him too. Who's this? Tyler, you're not gonna believe this. <laughs> the house is blown up. A woman could cut off your penis while you're sleeping and toss it out the window of a moving car. <laughs> that is, that is Very worse. Very specific. <laughs> just find a hotel, cut the foreplay, and just ask me. <laughs> Can I stay at your place? Yeah. <laughs> Look how easy that was. <laughs> he had one part-time job as a projectionist. Someone has to be there to switch the projectors. If you look for it, you can see these little dots come into the upper right-hand corner of the screen. Splicing single frames of pornography in the family film. <laughs> that is so funny. Nobody knows that they saw it, but they did. Nice big cock. <laughs> I, feel like I honestly thought I was going crazy seeing those flashes. With the little flashes. Miller also worked sometimes as a banquet waiter at the luxurious Pressman Hotel. He was the guerrilla terrorist in the food service industry. And as for the cream of mushroom soup, well, <laughs> you get the idea. Oh. Ew. He just likes chaos. What? This is crazy. You want me to hit you? That's right. He's nuts. Oh. <laughs> Mother fucker. That was the funniest punch. <laughs> My ear. <laughs> I fucked it up. Oh, that was perfect. That really hurts. Come on! We should do this again sometime. I don't know how Tyler found that house, but he said he'd been there for a year. Wow, so he's just living in an abandoned house? Yeah. Oh. By the end of the first month, I didn't miss TV. Everywhere were rusted nails to snag your elbow on. Oof. Everything else in your life got the volume turned down. That's cool. Some good audio mixing there. Yeah. We were finding out more and more that we were not alone. Monday mornings, all I could do was think about next week. Oh, jeez. You can swallow a pint of blood before you get sick. <laughs> it was on the tip of everyone's tongue. Tyler and I just gave it a name. Turn off the jukebox. Lock the back. They just totally took over. Yeah. They actually have a space now? The first rule of Fight Club is you do not talk about fight club fights will go on as long as they have to if this is your first night at fight club you have to fight ricky was a god for 10 minutes when he trounced the major d of a local food court oh. <laughs> but 
Fight Club only exists in the hours between when Fight Club starts and when Fight Club ends. He looks familiar. He's from uh, Band of Brothers. Oh! The guy oh, came to Fight Club for the first time. His ass was a wad of cookie dough. <laughs> oh, is that the nuts? <laughs> Good throw. Oh. <laughs> Gonna need a little time to recover after that one. Fight Club became the reason uh. to cut your hair short or trim your fingernails. I fight Gandhi. <laughs> Why? Good answer. Oh my oh. god. You interested in joining the Fight Club? <laughs> How'd you find me? I haven't seen you at any support groups. You haven't been going to yours. I took what was left of a bottle. Might have been too much. Oh no. Some interesting animation going on here. You won't believe this dream I had last night. Yeah, I can hardly believe anything about last night. What, what are you doing here? <laughs> yeah, how did she get there? I already knew the story before he told it to me. Or will it just be a death hairball? <laughs> <laughs> Jumped on the opportunity. Somebody call the cops. <laughs> She not live there? I think she does. Maybe someone called the cops to save her or something. I don't know. Miss Singer, let us help you. She's yeah. a monster. You have every reason to live. All night. <laughs> You're not into her, are you? No. God, not at all. <laughs> the shit that came out of this woman's mouth, I ain't never heard. I haven't been fucked like that since grade school. Oh God. She invaded my support groups. Now she'd invaded my home. If only I had wasted a couple of minutes and gone to watch Marla Singer die. Oh I could have moved to another room. I'm gonna hate her even more. Yeah. Can I finish her off? <laughs> He's close. Who are you talking to? Shut up. You give up the condo life, come home to this. Just ruining his life. Detective Stern with the arson unit. We have some new information about the incident at your former condo. Of ammonium oxalate potassium chloride. It means it was homemade. Soap? Who would go and do such a thing? I'll ask the questions. Don't. I don't know if it's him or if it's her. Are you saying that I'm a suspect? No, no. I may need to talk to you. I got this dress at a thrift store for one dollar. What? Can you get rid of her? <laughs> you know, you are such a nutcase. I can't even begin to keep up. <laughs> These people are crazy, all of them. <laughs> That's a good oh, strategy. Wow. Yeah, that was clever. Wait, what is this place? The liposuction clinic. <laughs> <laughs> Some plastic surgery. The richest, creepiest fat in the world. Oh. Out of the land. No. Oh. Oh. No. Oh, just leave. No. Oh, God. Ew. <laughs> That's so gross. What does their house smell like? I know, right? Yeah, with enough soap, one could blow up just about anything. Once it mixed with the melted fat of the bodies, a thick white soapy discharge crept into the river. Wow. This is a chemical burn. Ah! 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 Oh, God! Oh, my God. Your hand. No, and someday you're gonna die. It's only after we've lost everything that we're free to do anything. That was super <sighs> painful. We were selling rich women their own fat asses back to them. <laughs> First rule of Fight Club is you don't talk about Fight Club. You find this. What would you do? I'd be very, very careful who you talk to about that. Armalite AR-10 carbine oh. gas-powered semi-automatic weapon. Tyler's words coming out of my mouth. How do you even respond to that? Yeah. Cornelius. Bob. Bob's back. It's me. Bob. Aww. <laughs> well, I got something so much better now. The first rule is I'm not supposed to talk about it. Look at my face, Bob. It's fucking great. <laughs> I've never seen you there. You heard about the guy that invented this thing? He was born in a mental institution. Do you know about Tyler Durden? <laughs> thank you for this. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh-oh. Who are you? Who told you motherfuckers that you could use my place? 
I want everybody out of here right now. Hey, you should join our club. You hear me now? Did he just join? <laughs> yeah, I guess. We really like this place. <laughs> That's fucking funny. He's <laughs> proven his point. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they worked it out. That's not where I saw that going. <laughs> we'll see you next week. It took a beating. Yeah. This week, you're gonna go out, you're gonna start a fight with a total stranger, and you're gonna lose. Normal people do just about anything to avoid a fight. <laughs> oh, oh no! <laughs> yeah! Sorry. <laughs> Oh no! You keep me on the payroll as an outside consultant. Who the fuck do you think <laughs> you are, you crazy little shit? Oh. Oh. What the hell are you doing? Oh. <laughs> Why would you do that? <laughs> He's so shocked. For some reason, I thought of my first fight with Tyler. Oh. Don't hit me again. 52 weekly paychecks. This is how Tyler and I were able to have Fight Club every night of the week. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Super impressive. Tyler dreamed up new homework assignments. This group is getting huge. Yeah. These assignments. Escalating yeah. very quickly. These assignments are pretty intense. Did you know there's a Fight Club up in Delaware City? To swap yeah, those around. Oh my goodness. Oh my. No. <laughs> All these people in the fight club are like so connected in their own little industries. Stop, what are you doing? Come on. I can't find your back. God. Give me your wallet. You're going to die. <laughs> Raymond was what did you want to be? Veterinarian. Veterinarian. If you're not on your way to becoming a veterinarian in six weeks, you will be dead. Like the best life yeah, coach. Inspiring, but <laughs> awful. <laughs> but he might become a veterinarian. Tomorrow will be the most beautiful day of Raymond Castle's life. You had to give it to him. No. <laughs> Some good motivation. Starting to appreciate a lot of Tyler's philosophies here. What, what are you getting out of all this? What? Is this making you happy? What do you get out of it? It's totally different with us. We're... What do you mean by us? It's not. This conversation is over. Is over. Is he not real? What is happening? <laughs> <laughs> Too young. Oh. If the applicant then waits for three days, he may then enter and begin his training. You're too young to train here. End of story. Do you think you're ever getting in this house? You're never getting in this fucking house. All right. <laughs> yeah, he did it. <laughs> You're too old, fat man. Oh no, Bob. Yes. <laughs> you are not special. You are the same decaying <laughs> organic matter as everything else. Man, they could really fix that place up though. Yeah, they have so many workers now. In Tyler, we trusted. Hey, what's all this? <laughs> hey, what are we celebrating? Come on. <laughs> Let me get that for you. In their all black uniforms. Yeah. We believe this is one of many recent acts of vandalism related to underground boxing clubs. The fuck did you guys do? Sir, the first rule of Project Mayhem is you do not ask questions, sir. Project Mayhem? It's no longer just a little fight club. This is only the beginning. I gotta take a piss. Prevention and enforcement. Project Hope will be. Oh, man. You're gonna publicly state that there is no underground group. These guys are gonna take your balls. No. Do not fuck with us. So terrifying. <laughs> this is escalating so quickly. <laughs> Jeez. Oh. 
Oh. Get him to a fucking hospital. Yeah. That was way too far. Why wasn't I told about Project Mayhem? First rule of Project Mayhem is you do not ask questions. Oh. You decide your own level of involvement. I will. I want to know certain things first. What are you doing? You would have died right now. Oh, How no. would you feel about your life? Jesus Christ. God damn it. God damn it. <laughs> that was so close. Why do you think I blew up your condo? Stop trying to control everything and just let go. He didn't even know him before the flight, though. Just going for it. Oof. Pilot crash. We just had a near life experience. Near life experience? <laughs> Feel better, Jim. Uh, it looked like he was pretty hurt. Tyler was gone. The house had become a living thing. So many people moving, the house moved. It's a well oiled machine. Yeah. Cooking and working and sleeping in teams. Hang on a second. They all got off the phone when he walked in. It's under control, sir. He's still alive. He's just super fucked up. Yeah. What comes next in Project Mayhem? Only Tyler knows. Get the fuck away from me. So pissed off. Uh oh. Cops? Gunshot wounds coming through. Gunshot wounds. We were supposed to kill two birds with one stone. We had it all worked out, sir. They shot Bob. <gasps> Bob! They shot him in the head. Oh. Oh. Bob. We gotta get rid of the evidence. We gotta get rid of this body. Bury him. This is a man, and he has a name. And it's Robert Paulson. In death, a member of Project Mayhem has a name. It's Robert Paulson. His name is Robert Paulson. <laughs> they just took that so cult-like. <laughs> His name is Robert Paulson. His name is Robert Paulson. Just lost all control. Went to all the cities on Tyler's used ticket stubs. I'm looking for Tyler Durden. I wish I could help you. <laughs> He's a legend all over. Setting up franchises all over the country. We've just heard the stories. He has facial reconstructive surgery every three years. <laughs> is Mr. Durden building an army? Everywhere I went, I felt I'd already been there. I was always just one step behind Tyler. How have you been? Oh, man, he's rough. You were in here last Thursday. You were standing exactly where you are now, asking how good security is. Is I right? You're Mr. Durden. <laughs> he has lost it. <laughs> yeah. More with me. Have we ever done it? You want to know if I think we're just having sex or making love? <laughs> You love me, you hate me. Was that a pretty accurate description of our relationship, Tyler? <laughs> you broke your promise. Jesus, Tyler. You fucking talked to her about me. You were right. He blew up his own apartment? <laughs> Everything. We're the same person. That's right. All the ways you wish you could be, that's me. I'm free in all the ways that you are not. They don't have the courage you have. Just run <laughs> We should do this again sometime. <laughs> Other times, you imagine yourself watching me. You're fucking me. <laughs> but it's all the same to her. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is bullshit. I'm not listening to this. You are insane. No, you're insane. Are you thinking back of all the little clues or something? I need you to initial this list of phone calls, please. Tyler was working. So he's not even been sleeping. Who's everybody? Is anybody here? Yeah, with enough soap, we could blow up just about anything. Oh my god. Now I don't know what's made up. Did all those people exist? Yes. <laughs> I think something really terrible is about to happen at your building. You have got... It's under control, sir. Don't worry about us, sir. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Tyler just totally took over. Marla, you don't want that ball for you! Give the fucking room! Oh, gotta hear me. Oh, here comes an avalanche of bullshit. A little more faith than that. I'm crazy. <laughs> sir, anything you order is free of charge. <laughs> Clean food, please. In that case, sir, may I advise against the lady eating the clam chop? <clears throat> you got about 30 seconds. This is everyone. I care about you, and I don't want anything bad to happen to you because of me. Your life is in danger. You're Come an on. insane person. <laughs> there are things about you I like. You're spectacular in bed. 
But <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> I can't do this anymore. I'm gone. Hey, I don't ever want to see you again. That's fine. If that's what it takes, take this money and get on this bus. And I promise you, I will never bother you again. You're the worst thing that ever happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> what a send off. I am the leader of a terrorist organization <laughs> responsible for numerous acts of vandalism all over the city. I believe the plan is to blow up the headquarters of these credit card companies. You erase the debt record, then we all go back to zero. Nice. I don't think that's how that works. <laughs> Need to make a phone call. At least the police station seems not <laughs> infiltrated. I really admire what you're doing. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> We're avoiding this mission right now. You said you would definitely say that. <laughs> Get away from me! Drop this fucking knife! Drop it! Get down on the floor! First person comes out this fucking door gets a gets a lead salad, you understand? <laughs> lead salad. <laughs> Running around your underpants. Man, you look like a crazy person. No, I'm on to you. Ah. Some way to get in. <laughs> right. Big old bomb. Oh, Christ. Since when is Project Mayhem about murder? We're not killing anyone, man. We're setting them free. Bob is dead. You want to make an omelet, you got to break some eggs. <laughs> <laughs> Get away from the man! <laughs> God, you, get it? you are now firing a gun at your imaginary friend. <laughs> He's unbeatable. <laughs> How's he even doing that? Oh, man. Let's kick his ass. I love that they showed the security footage. Right. This is happening. Yeah. I think this is about where we came in. Think of everything we've accomplished, man. I don't know. Why is she here? I can figure this out. This isn't even real. The gun is even in your hand. The gun's in my hand. <laughs> Not my head, Tyler. Our head. Ooh. Oh. Are you, uh, are you all right, sir? Leave her with me and get your stuff. I'll meet you downstairs. How is he alive? What happened? I would ask. You're shot. Yes, I'm shot. Everything's gonna be fine. <laughs> So perfect. What a great song to wrap it up to. All right, that was Fight Club. We can't talk about Fight Club, so there's no discussion. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that was Fight Club. What'd you think? That was incredible. Right? I loved it. I'm sure it was nothing what you thought you were about to watch. Not even a little bit. I guess I did say that I thought it was some underground boxing something. Which, like, in the grand scheme of things, that is, like, not even relevant to the rest of the story. So that's... But was in it. No, yeah, I mean, <laughs> you got a good prediction, but, like, it was still a huge shock for you. Yeah, no, I... That is not at all what I thought that was going to be about. And I don't even know where to start. I mean, that was incredible. Brad Pitt always i mean i guess since we saw 12 monkeys yeah 12 monkeys he was an like excellent uh like person who had kind of lost his mind yes yeah so he plays a great like insane person yeah um edward norton was fantastic yep um and especially you know towards the end when we find out for sure that he is tyler it's like an, an alter ego for him he did such a great job with like the split personality yeah marla Fantastic. She's always great. I mean, she's she's everywhere. I just feel like from what I've seen her in, she's always like a character actress. Yeah. And this was not that. That's a good point. She's she's more, I mean, she's pretty like crazy in this compared to other roles. This yeah. is just kind of like a normal human type of thing. Right, she's just, I mean, she's broken. I mean, I guess, in the grand scheme of things, she's the most sane person in this movie. Yes, yeah. So she was fantastic. I love seeing her in this type of role. Yeah. So fantastic. I mean, and then there was a lot of people in this. Uh, Jared Leto. 
yeah. we saw, and then the guy from uh, Band of Brothers yeah. was in it. Meatloaf. Uh, Meatloaf was in it. I'm sure there's more that we probably just don't didn't, didn't really reckon, put yeah. together. Yeah, but I mean, the cast incredible. Yeah, just the whole story. I mean, the moment that I thought that there was something up was when uh, Brad Pitt's in the basement. Yeah. He's at the top of the stairs, and I think they were talking to Marla, right? Yeah. The way, it's just the way that Brad Pitt was telling him what to say. It was like he also was anticipating what he was going to say. Mm -hmm. And so it just was the way that he did it. I was like, that sounded like that was coming from him. Yeah. And then after that, there was little placements throughout the movie that I was thinking like, is this guy real? Right, yeah, like, it kind of, at that moment, it was in your mind, so you were looking for it a little bit more. Yes, yeah, so I was looking for it. Before that, I don't know, were there other clues prior to that? I think there's probably a lot more than I realized, but there are. Um, there's comments, um, uh, Edward Norton's character, saying that Tyler and Marla were never in the same room. Yes. Um, there was some dialogue talking about how when he was on the plane in the beginning and like, if I fall asleep, do I wake up as me or do I wake up as someone else or something like that? Okay. And when Tyler's first introduced, it's him waking up on an airplane and Tyler's just already sitting next right. to him. When you watch the movie again, there's there would be more scenes like when Tyler's interacting with someone, like a lot of the cult or the fighters or whatever you want to call them, they'll be kind of like have confused looks look on their faces. Like, what are you talking about? Like, it's like when they did the whole smiley face mm -hmm. and Tyler came in or Edward Norton's character, which I'm now realizing, does he even have a name? He had a bunch of different names, but what was his? I don't think he... Well, he kept saying... Jack. Jack. Yeah, Jack. I see right here in the credits, his name is... He's he just, just labeled as narrator. as narrator. So does... maybe we never found out. I'm trying to think what he gave Marla. He just gave her a business card. Because she was like, oh, I never caught your name. And then he walked off, right? Yeah, and every time he went to a meeting, he had a different, a different fake name. name. So yeah. that's something that I didn't even realize, especially looking at the credits right now. His name's just Narrator. Yeah, so I guess... But um, So we'll just say Edward Norton. Yeah, we'll just say Edward Norton. But yeah, so when Edward Norton came into the room, and they were all watching the news, and they were all laughing and stuff, and he was like, what the heck did you guys do? And they all kind of just like stopped and looked at him like... What do you mean? Like, You're like, why? Why are you? What are you talking? You know what we did. You were yeah. there. Like, so there are moments, even the flashing, where they kind of play it off as like the whole, um, you know, inserting a single scene or mm -hmm. something. But when I I see it, I, I take it as like that's him like slowly forming him into mm -hmm. like reality until yeah. he's constantly there. First of all, I thought the flashing. I thought there was something wrong with our copy yeah. of this movie. That's why I was asking. Yeah, you didn't you didn't mention the first few flashes. So I figured that you were probably just like, oh, there's just something yeah, wrong. Yeah, I thought there was something wrong with the, yeah. the video. And that that's why I brought it up. Because I was like, should we stop this? Like Super clever in the movie. Yeah. yeah. And then this, I think it was the second or third time it flashed prior to them revealing what it was. It was definitely Brad Pitt. Yeah. Like it was him. I don't know if it was him every time, but it was definitely him with his red like jacket, leather jacket yeah. that I noticed. So super clever. And I like the way that they kind of explained that, mm -hmm. like splicing in, which obviously I guess then that would be Edward Norton that was doing that. Like splicing it in and stuff. That had the job yeah. the movie. The night or... job because of the insomnia. Yeah. And... and I mean, I guess that played out later on when they were like, oh yeah, you have like nine jobs or something. Right. Yeah. He like sleeps like one hour a night or something like that. Right. He's just constantly going. Right. And when he's down, Edward Norton character can rest while Tyler is yes. still working. Yeah. Because he really did just kind of look like shit for a lot of <laughs> right, the movie. Yeah. Um, so they played that off really well. But... Yes. All of it was so clever. Like this is a movie that I would like to watch again oh, yeah. in the near future because I want to catch more. Yeah, we just listed a few of them, but even like after when he was traveling from place to place trying to find Tyler and the dialogue is like, I feel like I'm having deja vu. I feel like I've been mm -hmm. in these places before. Well, he has, he's been to all of these places before. So yeah, I didn't even catch that. That's only a few. Like what? I, I listed like three or four examples. There's probably like a dozen more. Oh, I'm sure. There's got to be a lot of stuff in there. The only other thing that I caught, which I didn't think of it as them being the same person, but I just thought it was so weird that he had dreamed of sleeping with Marla and then he woke up and then Tyler was sleeping with Marla. Yeah. 
And I was like, what the heck? And then now even thinking about that, she like got up and she was like, who are you talking to? Yeah. And even all of their interactions, like when he would be like, why are you here? And she would be pissed. Like, why are you talking to me like that? Like we literally just had sex all night long and now you're treating me like shit. Yes. So like when you really think back, she's confused too, because it's like, what's going on here? Yeah, like, there's something. There's some, It's like you're two people. Yeah. It's Cause he literally was. So there's, there's a lot in this and i'm sure going in it's just probably like like you were kind of thinking like an underground fight club or something maybe some criminal aspects of it or something mm -hmm. like that but what this movie is is like a mental mind fuck from yes. the very beginning but yeah. you don't even realize that you're watching a mind fuck until Already, yeah. yeah and then obviously we had some hints also with the detectives the arson detectives that that was a good point from you when you were picking because i was doing my best to just not spoil anything <laughs> so but when tyler was like i did it like i blew up uh, your condo and you were like they didn't even meet yet like yeah, he they was met on the they plane. met on the plane and so he left so how is that even possible the only way that's possible that tyler did that is that if he is Tyler. So at first with all of the, the soap and the dynamite, all of that, I thought that it had to be Brad Pitt. Yeah. Then when they said that, and they were like, oh, someone may have left the pilot light on days earlier. And I was like, well, he was out of town. And I was like, but clearly he has this like animosity, whatever with Marla. So in my head, I was like, oh, Tyler and Marla must be working together <laughs> yeah. to have blown up his apartment. So that's where my head first went. There was just a lot. I feel like I wasn't, I was trying my best to like speak through it while we were watching the movie, but there was still so much going on in my mind while we were watching it. And even just in the beginning, like I feel like I was not prepared for Edward Norton. I feel like I should have known that he was crazy at that point when he was just like, he was running like a million miles an hour and I couldn't keep up with how much he was going through yeah. everything. I think my favorite part of the movie was the fight scene with his boss. Oh yeah? Um, when he was just like- What are you doing, please? Like... Yeah, I think that was, and he had grabbed his hand so his boss's hand was all bloody. Yeah. That was just like, n no, no way. This movie's great. It's super dense too because you have this a lot of like i guess social commentary or something like anti-capitalism like mm -hmm. the idea that we're just working a nine to five to make enough money to pay for stuff that we're just being shown advertisements and stuff this uh sense of like a community or or a place in this world that maybe has a little bit more meaning i feel like it's dangerously evil to start a cult <laughs> because like all of these people they just wanted some sort of acceptance and mm -hmm. some like belonging that you know, they're doing something that's gonna change the world instead of just live in the I know, world. Like Bob. Like Bob. Like he he Bob was a super sad character. Yeah. That um, you know, unfortunately passed away, but then yeah. became an absolute legend in in this cult. <laughs> that's what it is. This fight club literally turned into a nationwide cult. Right. It's not just like a bunch of people like to beat each other up. Yeah. Like there was reasons why those people were there and it was really interesting to escalate to the point where it was almost comedic when like he would go anywhere like when he went to like the little diner or something and he's like it's on us and then he looks at the like all the cooks the entire kitchen and they're all staff. like yep like we're in on it too yeah. and that the funniest oh. part for me was the police station <laughs> and you were just like it was just a perfect perfect timing to be like well at least all the police officers are good and then immediately after that it was like the whole room of them the whole room was just like hey sir <laughs> yeah no that was that timing it's... it was incredible that was an incredible movie i feel like we could talk about it forever as i'm just like going through and trying to like i'm still kind of putting things together in my mind and it's definitely one where when you watch it again you watch it completely differently oh i'm sure yeah you're not like oh that was a fun movie i want to watch it again yeah this is like oh my gosh now that i realized what was going on i want to see this from the beginning all over again yes yeah and i'm not really one to re-watch movies i think we've touched on that before like i just once I watch a movie, like I've watched it now. Yeah, you love it, you enjoy it, and it's on to the next movie. Yeah, but this I would definitely like to rewatch and soon while it's still fresh in my mind. Right, yeah. That's really, I feel like, a very good achievement mm -hmm. of filmmaking that 
the movie is so well crafted in a way that it's designed to have you watch it again with a completely different lens. Mm -hmm. It's because I've only really seen it once. So this was my second time watching it. Yes. So I watched it entirely differently looking at some things. And it was just as good the, the second time as it was the first time. Yeah. And the cinematography in this was so cool. Yeah, it's a very beautiful looking movie. Yeah, there the shot some of those shots were crazy and I feel like the the part I guess it's two parts of the movie because we get Brad Pitt and Edward Norton that stand out. Yeah. Is that scene where it just like it zooms in so close to their face and, and it's, it's like, all like shaking, shaking yeah. and stuff and then they repeated it. And that's a cool thing about the filming too is when you watch it again or you just think about it, the way things were filmed were so that it's believable that it is just one person. Some of the shots were set up where like Marla would walk in as Tyler Durden would walk out or something like mm -hmm. that. So it was just clever filmmaking, but like you said, super beautiful cinematography as well. Yeah. And it ends pretty interesting. I mean, he essentially is able to accept the position of who he is and then shoot in his own mouth. And it kind of goes out like the back of his cheek, mm -hmm. but then it, goes through the back of the head of Tyler Durden. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's enough to get rid of it's Tyler, a, it's but not kill himself. Yeah. You know, I don't know how to take the ending because is he accepting of his new role as this leader of this massive terrorist organization? Or is he, did he fully kill Tyler and now he's just done with all of this? Like they're standing there and they're watching all of these buildings collapse, holding hands. Like, it's not like he, kills Tyler and then like they bring up uh Marla and he's like angry at everyone mm -hmm. or like he he's like oh go ahead and go back downstairs guys I'll see you in a second the other yeah. guy he's like hey can you give me some gauze like yeah he seems pretty accepting of this leadership new role, new role or I something. took I took that away as well yeah and I think that it was important you know that they talked about that they had pretty much infiltrated all of those buildings anyways for like janitorial and uh, security. Yeah, so no one died. Yeah, so they didn't kill anybody. They never killed anyone. I mean, uh, Bob died from a police officer, but they never killed anyone. Oh yeah, I mean, even in their like fight club, they stopped, they always stopped. Yeah, I, the one time Edward Norton's character went a little too far. Yeah. But even, you know, when Tyler Durden had that like, um, store clerk or whatever on the ground who wanted to be a veterinarian like there was never any bullets yeah. in the gun or anything right. like it was just this social experiment to bring someone to the point of death or they believe that they're about to die and to turn their life to change their life to give them a perspective of hey you could die at any second right stop working at this store go be a veterinarian if that's yeah. what you want to do go be that right which is crazy i mean it, it's a psychotic character but he's like like I said in the movie, it's like a, a life coach yeah. who like set him on a correct, even to the point of being like, I'm going to check up on you in six weeks. Like, yeah. this is not over. You better, you better live your dreams. Yeah, you better not be here yeah. working at this gas station or whatever they were working at. But There's a lot. This movie's very dense. Yeah, no, I definitely, I want to watch it again. I want to get more out of it, but I loved it. Yeah, no, that's great. I'm sure watching it, you're probably like, man, what the hell am I watching? Because there's so much weird stuff that happens too that yeah. you don't get the perspective until way later in the movie. Yeah, the beginning was a lot. Like, I was like, I don't, what is happening? Like, I mean, a fight club doesn't even originate till like halfway through the movie. Yeah, so there was a lot of stuff going on. It's all important. It all ties it, together. It, it, everything was to set up the whole reveal in the end that yeah. I think was fantastic. Yeah. Especially like... You really like the parts where, you know, it cuts in between him fighting Tyler and then it's showing like the security cam and he's just like <laughs> roll himself. by himself rolling around and stuff. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. I'm glad you enjoyed it too. Yeah. So if you would like to see the full length reaction to this, as well as everything else that we've reacted to, the link to our Patreon is in the description. If you would like to interact with us on any other types of social media, all of those links are in the description as well. And with that, peace everyone. Bye. Bye.